it's a big confidence boost in a race when you can catch people up and it cer certainly gave me that confidence to push on in the later stages of the race. So good morning, welcome back to the channel. It's just four days now until I fly off to the USA with Puma. Um, so I thought I'd wear some of the merch, rep the merch. Um, in today's video, I'm gonna go over how the Reading Half Marathon went, a bit of a race recap slash review. Um, I usually do this type of video the day after the race, but I've been super busy of late, so it's now 10 days after the Reading Half Marathon, where I ran 68.04 which was a new PB by about six minutes. So yeah, really big sort of breakthrough race for me. I averaged a pace that used to be, or is currently my 10K race pace. So I was absolutely over the moon to be able to maintain that sort of pace for the half marathon. And to be totally honest, I had no idea that that was um, sort of in the legs. So today I'm gonna to talk through a little bit about how I've been training uh, in the lead up to my marathon, which is the Copenhagen Marathon on the 15th of May. I'll then go over the race itself, sort of a breakdown of the key events in the race um, and talk about uh, how the race panned out in terms of the groups I sort of worked with um, and how I sort of pushed on towards the end to take fifth place. And then finally, I'll talk about how I'm gonna be training in the weeks leading up to the Copenhagen Marathon and talk slightly how I'm gonna adjust my time goal from two hours and 40, which was my original time goal at the start of this training block. Uh, and I'm gonna be, yeah, basically aiming for something a little bit faster. So we'll go over that in the, today's video, but let's start off with my training in the last six to eight weeks in the lead up to the Reading Half Marathon. So in the eight weeks prior to the Half Marathon, I built my training volume up from around 70 to 80 miles per week to 100 miles per week, which is 161 kilometers for those people who run in kilometers like myself. Made the conscious decision, I'm gonna be running a marathon. It's further than I've ever run before. Um, so I need to be training at a higher volume. Um, and I think in the last six weeks, in the build up to the Reading Half Marathon, my average weekly kilometer um, count, if you like, was 155 kilometers. So just short of 100 miles per week, probably around 98 miles per week. Um, so yeah, I've never really trained at that high volume before, um, a lot higher than I'm used to. I built it up slowly over a, yeah, over about a two month period. So it's not something I just suddenly decided to change overnight. And I've also been doing a different style of training um, known as the double threshold training, which is very common in the sort of Scandinavian countries brought to sort of light by the Ingebrigtsen brothers. These sessions are sort of a 30 minute threshold in the morning and a 30 minute threshold session in the evening. And I'll be doing that on Tuesdays and Thursdays along with a long run on a Sunday. So yeah, that's a little bit how I've been training for this um, marathon and the lead up to the half marathon race. Um, I made the conscious decision not to taper for this Reading Half Marathon. Um, it was just purely to see where my fitness was at um, at this stage in my training block. So yeah, the bottom line is I've been training at a higher level and a much more consistent level than I ever have done before. Um, and yeah, it showed in the result, I guess. And if you would like to see a little bit more about how my training was in the lead up to the Half Marathon and in the lead up to the Copenhagen Marathon later this year, you can do so by following me on Strava. I'll leave a link down in the description below. Um, yeah, I post all of my training on there, my warm-ups, cool-downs, slow runs, everything is on there, so you can go and have a little look. So moving on to the race itself, I actually only signed up to the Reading Half Marathon eight days before the start. Um, it was a very last-minute entry, it was just sort of, I was conscious that I hadn't really tested my fitness over the longer stuff. I've done some 10k races of late. Um, which are great, there have been some good performances, but none of them have really been uh, that longer distance stuff that I need to really be working on in the build up to Copenhagen. The race itself started pretty damn quickly. Um, the first kilometers were 3.03 per kilometer. I've got the race here on Strava. Um, so just let me quickly look at these splits. 3.03 for the first kilometer, 3.12 for the second, and 3.08 for the third. Um, so yeah, very fast start to the race. I was going to be aiming to run around 3.14 per kilometre was sort of my target for this race. So we went off a little bit fast, um, but it felt fairly comfortable at the time. It didn't feel too fast, which is a really good sign. It shows my fitness is in a good shape. And at this stage in the race, sort of two packs formed. About four guys, I think, went up the road and started pushing the pace. Um, I think they were sort of run, run solo for the majority of it. They were all very much um, running to their own pace. And then a 
sort of chase pack, I like to call it, of about 10 to 12 runners formed, which I was in. Um, we all sort of worked together throughout the race. It sort of broke up, which I'll go into in a little bit more detail in a minute. Uh, but yeah, it was really good to run in a pack. That's very much how I like to run these races. Yes, the pace was a little bit on the fast side for me. Not necessarily uh, effort-wise, but in the preparation, I didn't think I would be running at that sort of speed, but I just sort of went with the pack. Um, the effort felt good and I just sort of, yeah, thought I'm going to go with these guys. I don't want to be running on my own. don't want to do a solo effort. Um, it's much, much easier to run as a pack, as I've said in previous videos before. So after about four and a half kilometres on the Reading Half Marathon course is when the first hill comes. It's about mile three, I think it is. Um, and this is the point where my pack of ten sort of naturally split um, a little bit. Three guys went up the hill a little bit over a little bit harder than I was willing to go at this stage and I think my group whittled down to about six guys. So at this stage on the first hill we had four guys up ahead, three guys sort of chasing them that had broken away from the original pack that I was in and then you had my group which consisted of about six <coughs> six guys, sorry. I can remember making the conscious decision not to go with the three guys that sort of broke away from my chase pack. Um, I was conscious that, yeah, we had a long way to go. It was only mile three. We had 10 miles still to go. And obviously having set off pretty quickly, um, I was I was conscious to conserve some energy. Um, hills aren't necessarily my strong point, so I knew that maybe a, a few guys might go up ahead. Um, but hopefully on the flats and the downhills, I can catch them up, which is what happened in this race. Um, so I'm glad I stuck to my guns and followed my instinct. And that's personally my, my sort of race strategy. <clears throat> it's not something that's going to necessarily work for everyone, but when it comes to a hilly section, I tend to try and conserve my energy a little bit and then push on at the top of the hill or on the downhill sections. After we navigated the first hill, we got to the Reading University, which is at around the 10 kilometer point, so six miles into the course. Um, and this is where I found myself on the front of my ch of the chase pack, if you like. Um, which consisted of about six to eight guys at this point. It's probably the most um, tricky part of the course because you sort of have to navigate around a car park and some tight corners. But I found myself on the front of the pack, so I was obviously feeling good at this point. Um, and it showed in the splits. If we have a look here again on the map, um, this little squiggly bit here is where we entered the university. So yeah, slight incline to the university, 315 per kilometre, which is actually one of the slowest kilometres of the race. And then when, as we come through the university, there's a minus 12 metres of um, elevation there. The average pace was 3.02. So I was pushing the pace on the front of the pack. That's where I got this clip from. Thank you very much um, to a subscriber who sent that in to me. Um, so yeah, 10 kilometre point was feeling really good. The pace didn't feel too fast, which I was absolutely chuffed with. Um, I could see on my watch, I sort of have my lap pace and my average pace. And the average pace was still sitting at around... 3.12 per kilometre, which is what I averaged for the entire race um, of this Reading Half Marathon. So as we came out of the grounds of the Reading University, um, there was sort of a really nice sort of sloping downhill section just before the second big hill on the course. And this is where we actually um, caught up with the guys that had made the break on the first hill and sort of gone up of the hill a little bit. Um, we actually caught those guys up again. Um, so at this point, uh, my group was sort of pushing the pace on the downhill. We managed to catch up a few, catch up with a few guys, which meant there was only four guys up ahead. And we had no idea where these guys were. They were long gone. We couldn't see them at all. Um, it wasn't like we could see them in the distance and we were going to work together to try and catch them up. Um, we just, again, formed into that chase pack, probably of around six guys at this point, with the guys that we'd caught up who'd gone ahead. At around the eight or nine mile mark, we'd all come back together. This is just before the last sort of big hill on the course. The course itself has two fairly big hills um, and the second one, as the second one came, we were all back together. Um, and I think, yeah, only four guys up ahead. So it was looking good. We were all working together still. We managed to catch up a few guys. The group was working well together. Managed to navigate the second hill. No problem at all, really, for me. Um, again, I let a few guys maybe take a few metres on the, up, on the uphill section. But as soon as it levelled out, um, I caught those guys back up. And then we had this lovely downhill section um, coming into sort of the last 
few miles of the race which I really sort of put the hammer down. I can remember feeling absolutely great at this point. I was wearing the Alpha Flies on the day. But they are really good on the downhill sections. That maximal sort of cushioning and load of Zoom X foam, especially under the heel, really help let you yeah, basically go for it and let, let rip on the downhill section. So we were absolutely flying. I was on the front of the pack again, pushing the pace, and it got to around the 18 kilometer point and we were still all together. Um, and I was quite conscious that some people in the group weren't necessarily putting in um, and helping with the pacing. Um, so I was conscious I wanted to try and get rid of some people um, going into the later stages of the race because we were all going to basically be competing for that fifth place, having four guys going up ahead. This is at the point where I was like, these guys are just hanging on the back. It's time to put in some, some surges, try and get rid of a few people. I was feeling good still at this point, um, which looking back, I was, yeah, it was absolute dream, a dream sort of race, feeling good at this sort of 18 kilometer point coming into the later stages of the race. So between the 18 and 19 kilometer point, this is when I can remember putting in those surges I was talking about. I remember seeing some sort of traffic lights up ahead and I was like, I'm just gonna see, push the pace to those traffic lights and then ease back in to my sort of the 312 pace that we were traveling at, just to try and break up the group a little bit. And I did this a few times and basically whittled the group down from I think about six runners to around three runners. So yeah, going into the last few kilometers, it was just myself and two other guys competing for fifth place. Um, I'd done a, a lot of the work from the sort of 10 kilometer point up until the 20, well, 19 kilometers. I'd done my work, it's time to sit in um, and sort of fight these last two guys for position basically on the on the top, well, in my head, top five finish was, was excellent, top 10 would be good, um, so yeah. I really wanted to work hard and work for that fifth position. So that was sort of kilometre 19 to 20 and we came into the last kilometre to go um, and I remember seeing a uh, sign on the side of the road that said 800 metres to go and this is where I made my move. I pushed the pace on the front, I went around these two guys and they both came with me um, which was, yeah, showed they were also feeling strong um, like I was at this point. My hamstrings were starting to scream at me. Um, breathing was still under control and it was for pretty much the entire race, which was, yeah, something that was new to me. Um, usually aerobically, you struggle towards the end, but I was feeling strong aerobically, just the legs were starting to, to give in. Um, so yeah, with 800 meters to go, I made the move. They both came with me um, and then it sort of slowed a little bit with the 600 meters to go. We all sort of regrouped again. And then I saw a sign that said 400 and I was like, I've got to go for it again, try and get rid of these two guys. And at this point, one of the guys who was running with us actually came alongside me and maybe got uh, a meter, two meters ahead of me. And at this split second, I thought, no, he's got fifth place. I'm gonna to have to sit behind him for sixth place. In that split moment, I almost gave in that position. But then as we came around a corner, I saw the entrance to the stadium. Um, and I made a sort of last ditch sprint for the corner of the stadium knowing that I basically had to get a good racing line to be able to outkick this guy in the stadium because there was quite a lot of tight corners leading into the finish. Um, somehow I managed to find a, a sixth or seventh gear at this point, push on for that finish line. I came into the stadium and finished in fifth place. I think I was two seconds behind the guy who came sixth and four seconds in front of, sorry, the guy who came seventh. So yeah, really close race, um, nice and competitive right till the very end, um, which yeah, got the best out of me in terms of the time. Six, um, six minute PB, 108.04 was my official time at the end. Um, looking back, the race went pretty much perfect. I don't think I could have got much more out of myself on the day. Maybe 20 seconds max um, if we hadn't have sort of played the mind games along the way. Um, yeah, especially going into the last few kilometers where we sort of, where I sort of sat in. Maybe if I'd have pushed the pace, we'd have got a little bit faster, but I really don't think so. Um, but yeah, overall, was really, really tough with the half marathon. A big, big PB. Um, loved the course in Reading. The sort of two hills on the route broke up the course um, and made it for a really fun race, nice and competitive. Um, so yeah, moving forward, looking towards the Copenhagen Marathon. Um, I am going to adjust my time goal slightly. Um, obviously, it's going to be my first marathon, so the, the aim of this marathon is very much to enjoy the process, enjoy the race, to hopefully do another one, maybe later even in the year. 
Um, so I'm going to be aiming for 2 hours and 35, maybe sub 2.35 can be the goal from mo moving forward. Um, so anything 2 hours 34.59 would be great. Anything under that is the time goal now, moving forward to Copenhagen. But yeah, absolutely love the race. Hopefully you can take a little bit from this video and apply it to your races that are coming up in the season. Best of luck if you're training for a marathon as well, like I am. Lots of exciting stuff coming up on the channel. We're going to Boston next week, and then I've got another exciting project coming up very soon after, um, which I can't yet reveal, but yeah, super excited. Um, thanks for watching as always. Please leave a like and subscribe. It helps the channel and push this video basically to more people. But until next time, aspire to run, run to inspire, and we'll see you again soon.